All aboard! Didn't. Didn't. I, I, I. Because this is indeed a crazy train. Your stressed and depressed friends are back. MK, Dan, Boys Cry 2, hit the credits. So, mate, good week. Great week. Great week. Great week. Um, we're, you know, we're through Halloween now. We're through Bonfire Night. The spooky season is, is gone. Um, fireworks are gone, so we can stop terrorizing our animals. Um, but no, yeah, it's getting colder. Getting cosy. We're coming towards the festive period. It's all good, bro. I'm very sad to see the back end of the pumpkin spice latte. I had one last night. Did you? Yeah. Mate, Absolutely. if you just ask for one, I'm sure they've got the syrup somewhere beyond in the back. In a pantry. In a pantry, <laughs> if you will. Get the old deer to get it out the pantry. You should burp on air. <laughs> it's pig. because you ply me with the alcohol and, and flapjacks. To keep me going. Well, I'm just trying to spice it up. I mean, it's good. It works. Mate, bit of a problem this week. What's that? You're like, you've kind of inconvenienced me a little bit. Right. F- you. My wife, Gemma, has me looking for Taylor Swift tickets. Mm. Yeah. Good woman. Good woman. Mm. Oh. Bad man. <laughs> you. <laughs> Mate, I need for you to clarify something. Okay. All right? Mm-hmm. How much should you pay for your tickets? Let's be real for a moment. You want to be real? Completely transparent, open. Let's go, shoot. So, I mean, before I tell you, as I said, we didn't go the traditional route um, because we couldn't. It was impossible to get tickets. Okay. Um, So we had to be creative around it. Yeah. And... So we sought the hospitality room. Right. And I've said what we get, you know, special entrance, snacks, dinner, drinks, merchandise, after party. And that came to around £900 a person. (sighs) Okay, this is where my problem lies. Mm. Right. Give me that figure again. It's around nine hundred pounds a person. Wow, double double whammy, <laughs> right? Per person, per person. Yeah, I know. Do you know what you're doing to me? Do you know what you've done? Bankruptcy. <laughs> pa- pa- Pandora's box is open. This is Christmas, birthday, and next Christmas, mate. No, oh, I know. Do you know all the things you could buy with that money? Go. 1,800 cheeseburgers for the homeless. How many meal deals? How many Tesco meal deals that can buy? 600. Bro. That's t- like two years worth of Tesco meal deals. It is, yeah. You could have bought me my hair transplant. <laughs> but, but... But what? I'd rather go to the show. Okay. I appreciate that. And you enjoy your music. Great. How nice for you. Right? <laughs> right you've just been to the cinema to watch the same concert and now I, it's it's solidified that the show that I am going to be watching that you paid two bags for is going to be out of this f***ing world is it? I, I, I think it transcends music it really does it's without sounding ridiculous it feels like a moment in time in 15-20 years people are going to be looking back and saying oh did you go to the Eras tour you know, it's. I don't think I'm being ridiculous when I say I feel like it's going to be like that Freddie Mercury moment at Wembley. That shot that you see in his white shirt, oh, his white vest, um, in front of the crowds. Those pictures of Taylor in front of the audience are going to be that for future generations. Our kids are going to know about the Eras tour. I guarantee you that. Right. And I know that the money that we're paying to be there, 
But we want to be there. We want to be there. Well, me and you, now my friend, have bad blood. How do we? We do. <laughs> right? He's, at least he's learning. And the only karma you're having wow. is bankruptcy. After that, mate, two bags. On the subject of karma, go on. Do you like my T-shirt? Did you notice? No. You ready? Just take this off. Get the f- out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so there, we can see it. Let me just move my mic. And for, for all of those listening, uh, it says, Karma is my boyfriend. There we go. You're not the man I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. This this was actually my outfit when I went and saw the film. You wore that in public? Yeah. Who's, who's going to say anything? True. It's 2023. You can't say anything, can you? Do what you want, mate. What was your oyster? <laughs> Karma is my boyfriend. To match the bracelet. Oh, where's my... Yeah. I noticed, mate. Yeah. F- you. Where's my bracelet? Yeah, that's what I've been asking myself for two weeks. Car. I think it's in the car. I didn't bring it up last week. I didn't bring it up last week, but now, now you've had time to think about it and to to rem- even more time to remember um, about that precious gift that was given to you. Another week down the line and you still don't have it? Piece of It's in the car. I haven't lost it. I'll bring it next week. Okay? You know what? You've lost me. I haven't. <laughs> no, but I, I just want to say as well, um, obviously, we mentioned it last week as well, the kind of reception on social media, um, specifically the reception around the Taylor Swift clips that we've put out has been incredible. Uh-huh. Um, getting the love from that community as well as, you know, the wider, you know, more um, typical audience that we would hit has been amazing you know interacting with swifties and getting them watching the podcast commenting has been it's been unbelievable so we appreciate you thank you no matter what community wherever you are from the love is it's felt it is it means a lot but yeah the muss is going strong it's i like it can you hear where i don't know whether you're gonna be able to hear that but (laughs) it's for you um yeah, it's thick. It's going strong. Um, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit more <laughs> now. <laughs> what a <laughs> d- <laughs> um, It's, yeah, it's one of those things you have to get used to. Um, it's just so there. You know, I mean, I've got thick eyebrows anyway, so I'm not, you know. Charlie from Busted. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I've just got another one. Um so I've noticed when I'm out walking days in, yeah. um, you know, you always see the same faces and I have done for the past two years. And only now, since I've had this, have the, the middle age and the older gentlemen started to acknowledge me. You know, just a, a slight little a nod of acknowledgement that I'm, it's almost like I'm in the club. You know? You can grow a moustache. He's one of us. He's <laughs> it's one of us. Google got one of us. The, and I understand it. I get it. I was on my way back from the gym yesterday. Yeah. And I see this young guy, about my age, walking on the other side of the road. Go on. He had one. We locked, we very much like, like Nola. We locked eyes. And it was just a... Uh, in unison, a nod of acknowledgement. Not well on son. You get in there. And then the moment passed and then it was just like, it was almost like post come clarity. I was just like, what the f*** was that? What was this weird connection? <laughs> the Muzzy Club. It's mad. How would you make a connection? But, uh, you know, like I said, he was probably around our age and um, I can only imagine that he... Was growing it for the same reason as as I am, um, which leads me swiftly into the 
the theme of today's episode is something we want to talk to, talk about, rather. Um, and it ain't Bruno. <laughs> it's, it's, de- <laughs> it's definitely not Bruno. Um, it's, it's something that's not easy to talk about, and I know for a fact that it's not easy for us to talk about. Um, and that's suicide. Mm. Um, before we get into anything and, you know, we start to share our experiences, I just wanted to read some, some shocking stats on, on the subject and I'm going to read it because I don't want to get it wrong. Um, so don't judge me for, you know, looking at my screen. Um, but in the UK, suicide is the biggest killer of people under 35 years of of age and men make up 75% of those deaths worldwide that figure of of you know the proportion of men can can rise as high as 80% in the US um around 105 of our brothers die by suicide every day which is it's just mind blowing and around the world, around 800,000 people die by suicide every year. Um, that works out at about one every 40 seconds, but it's believed that that figure is wildly underreported because of the stigma around suicide. Um, by the time that we end this podcast today, we would have lost around 90 people to what I can only describe as a public health emergency and and one that we really do need to talk more about. Um, I feel, feel like we do all have an obligation to do it, whether it be in the media, um, on our social media, with our friends, with our family. Um, it's It's shocking. And I know that we we both have experiences with this, um, which we will share. But before we do, um, obviously, trigger warning, we are going to be talking about experiences where we, you know, have either attempted or we've we've been right there at the brink. Um, so prior warning. And disclaimer. Before we move on. I, I implore you again, please, please, please talk to your friends, talk to your family. And as we've said multiple times, we acknowledge wholeheartedly that people don't have people. Some people just don't. Yeah. So we are always there, whether it's by email, always cry to podcast at gmail.com, whether it's a comment on one of our social media posts, um, just get in touch. We will always be at the other end. Even if you don't want to talk about the problem head on and you want to talk about anything else just to distract yourself for a period of time, just shoot the shit. Get in touch. So, talk to me, bro. Yeah. Talk to me about your experience with it. I have got um, a really early on experience with it. Um... And it stems from when I was about eight or nine. And my mom was in a really abusive relationship at the time. There was a lot of a lot of alcohol and domestic violence going on um, almost nightly. And for me to hear that um, almost daily was, was, was difficult. It was a difficult period in my life. And... Um, yeah, I just used to hear my mom fighting with this guy every night. And he used to beat the shit out of her. Like, and when the violence started to happen, I used to go down and interject and just essentially beg someone to stop beating the shit out of my mom. Um, and the guy was a piece of shit. He used to smash the house up. Like, not only did he used to slap my mom about, but like he used to get a hammer out. One time he got a hammer out, um, he smashed the washing machine, he smashed all the TVs, and he went outside, smashed all the front windows of the house. Real psychotic behaviour, like wild. Real yeah. 
And that was one of like the worst times. Mm. I remember my mum was crying on the floor. After he did all this, he walked over to a vase and picked it up, threw it and smashed it over her head. And then um, I tried to stop him. He shoved me off and pushed me. I hit my head off a wall. Nine. I'm nine at this point. And this used to happen, like, not to that extent, but the abuse used to happen a lot. And I used to listen to it in bed. And there was a time where the violence had stopped. And I was in bed. It was really late. And my mom was listening to Enrique Iglesias, Hero. Um, I was really sad. I mean, if there's anything that's going to push us to the edge, it's Enrique Iglesias' I, Hero. I know my mom was crying downstairs. Yeah. And I used to cry in bed, knowing that. Mm. And one time I was really, really sad. And I got a pillowcase around my head. And I tried to wedge the pillowcase down the side of the bed. So I put that around my head and I just, just tried to suffocate myself. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was looking for a way out. Mm. Again, nine. nine. And that's one of the first experiences I had. And I've never told that story before. Do you remember how you got out of that situation? It didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah, I was too much. I, I guess I was scared. One, the act didn't work because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, you don't really understand. I didn't really understand the logistics of the suffocation or whatever. You just know that you wanted a way out of. I just wanted out of that situation. I didn't want to feel that sad anymore. I didn't want to live in that environment. I didn't want to experience that anymore. Um, yeah, and that's my first personal experience with just no kid should ever have to experience it. Absolutely not. It's shocking. What a c- so yeah, eventful. What about you, bro? Um, it is. It's so difficult to talk about. Um, see, I've I, one vivid um, experience always comes back to me. It was the start of a very difficult time mentally. Um, It was about 2018. So, you know, not long out of uni, um, fresh into the world of work and adulthood. um, And, so you know, so many new pressures. Um, So I was working at a place, severely underpaid, overworked, you know, thrust with so much kind of responsibility that was just wild for my age. I think I was about 23, 24 at the time. Um, I was hemorrhaging money because of commuting. It was crippling me. I was minus money every month, just trying to get into work. Um, And then on top of that, the commute itself could have been two, two and a half hours each way. So I was out of the house at seven, 10 to 7 in the morning. Some nights I wouldn't get back till 8, half 8 because of trains. You know, how it's sh- no life, man. How sh- that can be. And, you know, it was terrible. It was... You know, I, I, I don't understand how some people do. Um, so, yeah, that's... It, that You know, to set up the, the scene. Um, I hated what I was doing work-wise. Um, couldn't, couldn't stand it. Um... It was a source of so much stress, anxiety. And I just remember one day, it was a particularly sh- day. Um, and then that was compound- compounded by delays getting home on the train. Of course, every single f- day there's a delay on the train. Um, so I, it was rammed. This carriage was just rammed. Um, sardines, shoulder to shoulder. China. China. <laughs> um and I just sank into such a low point. I thought to myself, when this train stops, I'm gonna get off and I'm gonna jump in front of it. 
and I fully was, I was going to do, there isn't a doubt, a, a doubt in this, you know, in this world that I wasn't going to do it. I was fully going to do it. I was quite literally just waiting for the train to stop. Um, Jesus Christ. And the one thing that stopped me was I got a text. And it was it was the same text that I get every single night from Amelia. Just telling me that she's at the station. She's waiting for me, picking me up. And I looked down, read the text, and right there and then, I just knew that I wasn't going to do it. It all faded away. And I was just kind of stood there on, in this packed train carriage. No idea what anyone else was going through around me. I could have been in exactly the same spot. And I just felt so much shame. And this is a story that I might have told once before um, to Amelia. And yeah, it was that text just letting her letting me know that she's there waiting for me. How could I? Mm. How could I? Knowing that she could be sat there two, three hours completely unaware that I'd just taken my own life waiting for someone who's never going to come. There's, there's no way. It's mad what happens to make you stop. There's no way. Um, and then, yeah, three weeks later, we break up and then went into the worst year of my life, but <laughs> silver <Sure>. linings. <laughs> but you got a lot of writing done. <laughs> <laughs> no absolutely no. but like these journeys man like you were the way I see it is you were meant to have that time you know you need 100%. to you need to sometimes you need to hit low to, to build up to who you are now knowing it was just you know that text that text is sometimes all that is needed one text two words and an emoji is all that it can take for someone to step back from that ledge to not get off that train to put that bottle of pills down to take that noose from around their neck that is all that is needed sometimes is two words a text message a call a check-in and that's why we are so strong in what we say when we say, talk to your brothers, yeah. talk to your friends, talk to your family, check in. 100%. I couldn't say any more. Wow. So, I mean, you, you, not to keep going down a, a dark route, but, no. <laughs> you know, have you got any experiences since you were a a child yeah um again it was i feel like it was a lot easier for me not to go through with my last thought because of my children but there was one instance where i was um i was in a van driving down a um, country lane it was raining you know Windies, really awful road to be on. Um, I was going through a, a lot of shit at the time, you know, a lot of self doubt, self worth. I just didn't feel good about a lot of areas of my life, and I just felt like, yeah, I felt, I just felt alone, man. And I was going, I was driving down this road. And there was a, a lorry coming head on. And I swear to God, it feels like it happened so fast. Like, I had both hands on the wheel. Music blasting. I don't even remember what was playing. I was that in the zone. It was like a blur. 
just two head, massive headlights coming towards me. My hands, my hands were shaking. I was like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And I just saw my family's face, my kids, my wife's face, boom, every, all at once. And it just like, it just stopped me. I feel like, oh, it's just mad what stops you. But I feel like if you have that responsibility, I'm not going to say it's easier sometimes because that's not true. But I just saw their faces and I suppose I had that moment of clarity, which not everyone has. The thought of them being here without you. Yeah. And like my kids to say, oh, your dad killed himself. I don't want that. And it's like, it's awful because some guys don't have that clarity. Their self-worth is just that low. They just don't have the capability to stop and they go through with it. And it's awful. No, and that's why it is so important that we do, that we are there for each other. Yeah. Um, like, you know, ever since you've been open about these things with me, and we haven't always been. No. We have, like, I've never told you about that moment in 2018. Oh. It was um, heavy, bro. But, you know, ever since that we have been open with each other, there was a period in time where I would check in with you every day. Because... And I've, I've been open, Jesus Christ, cry more. <laughs> I've been open with Amelia about the fear of losing you. There was a period where I'd make sure to check in with you every day because I thought that I would get a message from your wife telling me that you'd, you killed yourself. So it was something that I always made sure that I did for the longest time. You know, when I knew that you weren't in the best place. And yet it was a huge fear of mine. Huge. Fuck. Fuck. How have we got no tissues in here? <laughs> the podcast called fucking Boys Cry Too. Oh, bro. <sighs> Branded tissues, probably. That would be good. Oh, bro. That's, that's a hard listen. I fully believe that you were going to. Dark time. It's hard to reflect on. Sorry. Sorry, man. <laughs> absolutely. Not absolutely. Like, that, that isn't your responsibility or white to bear. Not at all. Not at all. You were going through something at the time, and yeah. We're doing better now. We're getting there. 100%. You know? I appreciate it, bro. Oh, I love you, bro. Love you, man. <sighs> we've got anything? We've got, we've got a live now. Anything more uplifted? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it, to be honest, these episodes are going to hit sometimes because. Yeah, these subjects, are f there's no way around it. They just oh, tap into these emotions and memories that, yeah, they're awful, but we're here to share them, guys. And don't be ashamed, you know? Um, like, I know I was getting annoyed at myself for crying, but honestly, it's only because I can't talk when I'm crying. It, it feels like I've got <laughs> an actual apple in my throat. Um, but no, it, it's it's something that we don't, we shouldn't be ashamed of. Own your emotions. Um, it's something I'm I'm absolutely working on myself. Like I'm, this is the most open I've seen you like ever. Like the, the most vulnerable, and it's not nice to see, but it is. You know the sentiment is nice. Yeah, it's uh, the it's, it's the release. You know yeah. we need it. Um, like I should not give you a big hug, but there's so much equipment in the way. There was just... <laughs> Honestly, you couldn't swing a cat in here. <laughs> there's no space. <laughs> Oh, wow. I mean, I think we've lived up to our name, you know? And it's one thing to remember. Um, you know, girls cry. 
But as you've seen, always cry too. Always cry too. Love you, bro. Love you, man.